Hello there everyone. Today's video is picking up with following an in-class assignment with that primarily focusing on the count if, sum if in Excel. So I made a fictitious data set up here with crime type, day of week, and an amount associated with each individual crime. With that I'm just going to go over a couple different examples of how you can use count if and sum if within Excel for different purposes. So in general the count if formula or function within Excel is truly to do that account. So say I was interested in, in this sheet, how many thefts there are. So I'm going to put theft over here and I'm going to come over to the next cell and do equal sign count if. And it already specifies the range it wants you to pick from. So I'm going to select A2 to A11. So we have 10 here. And the criteria I want it to be, and if you notice, I've already hit the open quote here. So I want to specify, let's say theft, like I said, close it off and then close off the parenthesis, hit enter, and it's gonna go through this column A2 to A11 and look specifically for theft. So you can see up here in the formula bar that I put in theft here. It's asking for that specifically. So if I change this and say I wanted to look for shoplifting, I would do a similar process of count if, select that range again, the next part is within quotations, put what value or text in this situation that you're looking for. So again, it is spelling sensitive, case sensitive, or spelling sensitive, so make sure you have that correct. Again, if you look through it, quick glance, we have two shoplifting, so it's pulling that out. Similarly, if we wanted to look at day of week, so say I wanted to know how many crimes in general there were on Monday out of these 10 crimes that have some type of value amount attached to them, so again, count if I can select this range and in quotes, I'm going to put Monday. And we can see up here we have three different crimes on Monday. Now, a cool part you might be interested in is say we're interested in a combination or a value that's greater than a specific one. So we have an amount here. So let's say anything over 1,000. So since we have an amount, we can still do a count if we're going to specify that our range is the actual amount, but we only want to count it if it's over a specific value. So we want to say greater than, and we're going to put 1,000. Close it off. Oops, quotes. Close it off. And again, since I put 1,000 there, if we look through here, we have one up here for burglary, one over here for shoplifting. So it's still going through and selecting and counting the actual number of rows. So if you think data points or incidents in this data set that have an amount over 1,000, you can change that a couple different ways. And Excel is very good with the operators to where you can put multiple functions within it. So you can have a double count if between equals, greater than, less than. And they have some interesting parts, and this is more advanced if you want to play essentially what they describe as wild cards with your asterisks and question marks, but if it ends in a certain character at the end, a lot of options there. Now on the other hand, since we've done a count, it's truly counting the number of rows that you have. If we're using a sum if, essentially we're going to specify that we want it to count, but then sum up another column for us. So again, if I come over here, and I'm just going to put count above here so we know what those were, and I'm going to come over here and do a sum one. So say I'm interested in theft amount. And obviously if I had more than 10, it would take some time to go through and select out each one and make a subset and then sum it all up. That's why we can use a sum if option for it. So it's asking us for our range again. So we're going to select this range. So this is what it's originally going to count. I'm going to tell it to pull and look for and count if we have a theft. If it identifies a theft, then it's going to sum the corresponding value for us. So that's why I selected C2 through C11. So I close that off, we see 855. So again, another way to double check this is if I come over here and now do the basic addition. So I have theft is 150 here, theft 640, 45, and 20. You can see that these two add up accordingly. This one like pulls the number because I'm actually selecting on the dollar amount, so it's pulling that over. It's a nice handy for it, but it's an easy way to double check for us. You can see that since I did not put theft from auto, it's specifically looking for the theft amount, and that's what it's adding up for us. And you can see up here the cells that I chose in the amount column. 
So it's a nice way to choose those out. Again, say I was interested in the number of thefts that, or number of crimes and the dollar amount that occurred on, what's a good one up here, Thursday. So Thursday, again, we're gonna specify a sum if, so I wanna sum up the values only for crimes that occurred on a Thursday. So I'm gonna select day of the week. The criteria that I wanna select it based on is Thursday, the day of the week comma and then select the range that it will end up adding up close it off and we see that it's 4420 again another way to check this if you're ever interested is just to add them together so we have 850 plus 2825 plus 745 and you can see that those do add together correctly again excel has other operators that you can use within countif and sumif but these are quick examples of when it's appropriate to use either one and how they can save some time for you if you're not familiar with Excel and you have a much larger data set. Easy commands to get used to and will help you save time in the long run. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If not, enjoy.